I grew up in a Christian home, so I learned about giving at a young age. We passed the plate at our church, so I would see my dad, you know, every Sunday, either put some cash in or write out a check. Then when I graduated from college and got my first real job, I remember asking specifically, so you know, 10%, 10% tithe, is that before taxes or after taxes? And my dad, you know, being wise and a, a mature, godly man said, well, that's probably not the right question to be asking. The question is more about why you're doing it, where your heart's at, and what your motivation is. I guess you could say maybe the Holy Spirit gave me a desire to learn more about it. And then when we started attending Grace, it went from this, yes, I'm happy to give 10%, to more of a 100% as God's. It's so easy to get into that idea of kind of buying God off and paying him off his 10%. And then this 90%, this is what I get to keep and this is what I get to use to build my kingdom. Where in re reality, it's all God's and you have to honor him, not just with giving, but with saving, with spending, with 100%. The Holy Spirit kind of brought that, you know, into my life to have a little more full understanding of what stewardship really means. How many of the parables deal with money and possessions? How much of the Old Testament talks about money and possessions? And how important your view of those things are with respect to your walk with God and your, your faith and your growth and your submission to Him and everything. In the New Testament, when the widow puts in her two copper coins and then the rich man comes in and, you know, two huge bags of gold, and Jesus says the, the two copper coins are honoring. And that's because it was sacrificial, because it meant something. It wasn't about that absolute dollar amount. It's about the heart. I'm giving this to you, God, and I trust you to provide. That led us to a position that we felt like we need to give in, in a way that's sacrificial. Maybe it affects what clothes we buy, or how many vacations we go on, or where we go on vacation, or if we go on vacation. The more financially secure you get in terms of the world's definition, I think the bigger disparity there should be between how you could live and how you do live. You only need so much. And as we've trusted God more, he's given more opportunities. He's made us aware of other needs and he's blessed us in a way that allows us to do some unplanned giving, you know, when, when a need arises. I recognize that I am not in control. Lord, we're only giving you back what is already yours. You already gave us all of this. It's the whole earth is yours. It's an admission, Lord, I am dependent on you for everything. This is just a small token of that, that humility and that dependence the Holy Spirit has shown me that I have on you, not just with, with finances, but with the very breath in my lungs, a, a house to have, uh, to live in. It's, it's all the abundance of your hand that, that I have. And I'm just, just returning a small token.